the our yeah, left to the, yes i'm not sure which left you're seeing but yeah. yes and it's called what is that device called it's um it's a maki mixer okay uh let me let me let me just pop it up on screen so you guys can see what it looks like uh i bought it from amazon so basically what it, it's doing there is okay so what we have let me give you a quick running of this setup um uh back to this camera yes this one are you seeing the other one move now you're seeing over here yeah yeah we're seeing you good so so what we have happening is um we have all the inputs coming into the board and just as perrin mentioned having those outputs those sends are very important uh if you ask me you are the most important thing is to get a board that has a lot of inputs and outputs and um and you will be good to go not just inputs but if you can get one with combo inputs combo meaning it has both um quarter and xlr as an input trs is the proper name or tr whichever ts rather and the xlr inputs uh let me just bring this up on zoom uh da, 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 da. Uh, guys i'd like for this to be more of questions and answers i'm going to talk about the whole digital thing as well but ask the questions actually i wanted to, to respond to daniel's thing daniel's question i think it was about what he's what the issue is having daniel edwards actually yeah. had a response for him as well on that uh, share screen uh, sure. sharing oh yeah, yeah daniel cool yeah i'm gonna give you a quick response on something that you mentioned so amazon what we're looking for again we're looking for the maki mixer uh maki looking for the market mix let me just go to your orders because i know i know i'll find it much faster uh, running slow okay and what i actually just bought some stuff for live stream as well uh, we do we do live stream since covid started but we just invested in a gaming desktop for that uh, because we want to you know we want to properly set up the thing so even this station that i'm sitting at now we're going to change it to the length of the bed the bench we're going to actually start building it hopefully this week um to receive that machine when it comes we just ordered it like last week um um and that's just to deal with it's actually the brain of a lot of the things that we're going to be able to do moving forward so maki um so this is the mixer there are a number of mixers we, we bought a whole bunch of these ones probably about six seven of them reason for that is so that if we have additional musicians let me pop that up real quick if we have additional musicians we don't have any issues patching them in and the idea i have from the beginning is to have a plug and play system so up top all the di's and the inputs are there on the floor and they're all connected to some channel here on the mixer board so this is the maki mixer that we're using so we have a headphone amplifier so out of the main mixer we have sent four outputs and they're both in they're all in stereo one and two is stereo and three and four is also stereo let me show you what that looks like this is this is our digital mix or uh, mixer um, so this is what this what you're showing is for the um the the headphone mix yes, or the in-ear yes. mix okay. yes yes that's definitely an in-ear mix I'm gonna show you that for sure so um so over to the right here it says drummer and then it says everyone else now um had I had a board that had more outputs then I would have actually singled out for guitar, bass, drum, keyboard, everybody going down the line. But I don't have that flexibility because as you can see, we have live stream as an output stereo. Um, pulpit is mono and the side fills are also mono. Um, you can see that from the other camera. Uh, you probably can't see it so good, but the other camera, I can try to use my hand. There's one right here. There's a speaker right here. And then moving over to the other side, speaker right here. If you can see it on the other camera so just if you're on your phone just swipe to the next next scan until you find the other camera and then we have two at the pulpit right here and right here two at the pulpit um right so so uh what what's happening is this is for the mix now for to, to kind of respond to daniel we send two outputs for the drummer and two for everyone else which means if a guitar player comes a saxophone player comes saxophonist uh anybody else 
they are patched into a headphone amplifier that we have right beside the drum booth. Um, guys, you know, I can actually show you what's going on here. While I talk, I'm just going to log in from my phone and let my phone be one of the cameras as well. Um, so, so a headphone amplifier, and what happens is that on that headphone amplifier, we have 16 more outputs, 16 more headphone outputs. And that alone can tell you that's a, that's a big deal to have 16 more. So that means I'm not limited to just what my board gives me, but I can send out a lot more. So now on each of these devices, let me swing back over to the device. On each of them, um, what we do here now, we have up top channels two to three. We punch, we patch in here. For example, everybody is in two, three. Like I mentioned on the, on here, everyone else is two and three, right? And if it's a bass player, then he'll patch himself also into channel one of his own personal um, monitor. The DI that every DI pretty much should come with an in and out or a parallel or a through, they all have the same name. So when he point, when he goes to the input, then we take the link out or the, the through or the parallel or whatever it is, and we patch that into maybe the, the line in or the, the XLR, depending on what we have running with or working with at the time. And so now channel one on this is his level. He sets his gain. He can set his EQ, whatever it may be. I want to just bring it up on the phone so you guys can see what's going on. Bring up whatever he wants and turn himself up or down without affecting everybody else in the mix and everyone else like i mentioned is channel two so that's everything else he's hearing his own bass signal is actually coming back to him but this is actually a complete mix um, of the entire system now to be more specific as to your question um and how we do it uh let's see uh you can you can see me on my phone i don't know why i have a background um i don't know how to turn off this background thing on the phone let's over oh, to our background okay 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 none so you guys can see me on my phone too really if you can just put this as a spotlight instead this is the only one you want just well yes for now it's just the phone as the spotlight all right coming up i'm gonna spin it around Okay, you guys can hear me? I oh, know what's going on. Yeah, we're here. Yes, you can. Oh, you guys can see my laptop now? No, I think it just disconnected. Hold on. <clears throat> um, but just to continue, so all the other mixes coming in from there. Now, Daniel, to be more specific to your um, question, I actually mix everything from my earphones in service. So while I'm playing the instrument, I'm hearing exactly what everyone is hearing outside in the house. And I'm also hearing exactly what everyone is hearing for a live stream. Everyone actually has their own way of doing these things, but this way seems to work the best for me. Why have I done it this way? Because for one, um, when you're doing audio engineering courses and stuff like that, they will always say to you, whenever you have mastered your um, your song or track or whatever it is, you should listen to it from your phone, listen to it from various devices, phone, car, or car speakers, you know, even in a church settings, if that's, that's where you're going to use it. It should sound good everywhere. All right? It should sound good everywhere. And I've taken that concept. Uh, oh, my phone is up. Okay, good. I've taken that concept. Um... I can't see myself, that's why. <laughs> All right, I see my phone. I've taken that concept to, um, to, to church. And so <clears throat> whatever I've, I'm hearing in, the, in my earphones, exactly what is being heard online. So this is where I am um, every Sunday. Uh, don't mind how it looks right now. This is my connection right here. Right now, you're only seeing just one input. This is just a headphone jack out here, phones. And I'm in four and five. Probably other devices are in like two and three for example the one on the floor here that's for like the guitarist if we have a guitarist that comes in going across we have di's there we have another di for the bass and you guys you can see his, his main one is plugged up right now but this second one right here 
is called link um and that goes out out follow the cable and here we go right into channel one and that's his signal in channel one Really, everybody's seeing, I'm not sure because I'm just talking. Yeah, man, we're seeing. We're oh, seeing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now it's making, cool. it making more sense. Yeah, so, so, so now he turns himself up or down and mm. it doesn't affect anyone else in the house. Your mix remains consistent based on what you have oh, set okay. it to be. Um, mm. And then again, here's other signal coming in. And where is this coming from? clearly it's going to run behind there and do all sort of stuff that thing right yeah. here this white thing i'll just throw this in this white thing actually turns on and off everything up this side using a remote sometimes okay. when you're the last person having to turn off the entire system you have to walk around and turn off stuff no 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 no, no, no. not this not this boy <laughs> i can't be bothered with that so i actually got some devices that allow me to just use a remote to switch off everything from where i am from the from the mixing station so 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 this signal here the channel two three is actually mm -hmm. connected to this device right here as you can see it's moving up and down yeah. every time i talk that's a signal coming through and um, okay. so this gives us this is a uh, this is a i don't know if i turn the phone sideways if you're going to make a difference for you guys you seeing it the right way this way yes sir right so that is what the this is. okay oh, okay yeah that's what it gives us 16 more outputs um and at the back it allows for two different inputs to come in well four mm -hmm. well two because as you can see if we go here let me go down here channel one it says in and in one and in two mm -hmm. and I also use stereo and you see mono and yeah. so we use stereo this channel here is all all these are tools everybody else is two but what i've done i've given the drummer his own mix um so he does anything he wants to do for himself uh, but everybody else shares the same thing and at the back we have eight more of these um running and then we have our card or or you know cordless microphone system and so forth um so so answer your question daniel the first thing that you need to actually execute something like this is a digital board why yeah, well, that's because it. yeah <laughs> you need you need control anywhere you are um mm -hmm. um um, sorry, I turned off the camera by mistake. I was supposed to flip it. Yeah, um, anywhere you are in the church. So actually I have an iPad probably done by the mixer. I use the iPad, I use my laptop. It's, mm. The laptop is act actually sits right on here. So I'm controlling everything there. I connect everything via ethernet. I use mm. cables. I used to use Wi-Fi, uh, but what you find happening is that sometimes the signal drops. Uh, mm. Even for your live stream, sometimes the signal drops and when you plug something in you realize that the signal the, the internet is still going but the wi-fi signal has failed some way somehow so i've just decided to just run everything cable i have another digital board that i'm using over here this one is really just for additional microphones so all these microphones are linked to one channel on the board mm -hmm. there's a reason for that and this is again a part of the whole digital mixing um idea so let me go back down to the machine. Anything you're seeing and you want to find out, just ask the question. I'm just gonna kind of give you a flow of what I do here, um, where the digital mixing is concerned. So those additional channels, and my iPad is dying. All right, so um, I'm gonna turn off this one for now because I'm back here. All right, Tyrell, you can you can spotlight back to the main the one here. Um, so what was i telling you about i was telling you about the additional mixer up top so that mixer i'm not sure if i am still sharing screen oh yeah i'm sharing screen now um so that mixer yes that mixer is actually is actually number 19 here and so everyone is coming in to number 19. Oh, i wanted to say one thing to you about that i'm kind of jumping all over the place right now when you have a digital board what you can do you can set your your sends to be post instead of pre you can set them as post so if i were to click on this one for the drums and go over here it's post everyone else is also post top left corner and live stream as well as the pulpit and the side fields they're pretty much everything is actually is post from from drummer down to the downstairs signal is post all right so why is it post the reason for that is 
if someone is singing in a lead microphone and they're yelling and I need to turn them down, like right now I'm turning myself down, I'm turning myself down right now, and I turn them down, what is that? Right now, this is the main thing that I'm turning down, but notice that it's also turning down for Zoom. Turn down, turn down, turn down, turn down. It's actually affecting Zoom. So what, what, what's happening there is um, um, I've, I've allowed for anything I do to the main mix, it affects live stream, everyone else, the drummer, the pulpit, the side fill, side fills, everything at the same time because it's very, very uh, difficult to turn this down and then have a jump to the drum and turn him down, turn down everybody and then turn back up. I just pull one fader down and everything gets turned down. And that's actually what you need to have happen because if, if the person is yelling, clearly it needs to be turned down for every listener. Um, so digital board gives you that and analog board cannot do that. So definitely be considering to go digital moving forward and it will help with the mixing. Another thing that I tell the musicians to do is to max out their instruments. When a musician comes, whether it's a keyboard or a bass or whatever it is, just max it out and leave it there. And every time you want to turn down, you can turn it down, but when you're ready to play full again, turn it back your, um, your instrument to max. Why? Because they can't get any louder and they're less likely to affect your mix. And also, they have their own monitor mix up top. So they will just turn up or down that, that, um, that dial uh, to control their own volume and they're good to go. You don't have to worry about um, it's being too loud, being too soft. Well, if it's being too soft, it may be because they're turning down the actual instrument. But you just said to them, leave it up and turn down your actual monitor if it's too loud. Turn on yourself in your own monitor so that the, the main mix can remain the same. Um, yes. With the All hand right. raise, Andre, Daniel. Yeah. You want to take a question? Hi. From I'm listening. Okay, so what do you set first? Do you set the, the levels of the monitors? Oh, cool. Or do you set the gain? Okay, what do I set first? All right. Okay. You know, funny enough, we did that last year. Uh, not last year, year before last, Unstoppable Worship, uh, where we're talking about what we do set first from what we set last or so forth. Yes, so on this camera material, the other camera that's facing the mixer board. You can spotlight that one instead. Let me All turn right. off the share screen. All right. You're, you guys are seeing this one now? Yes, we are. Okay, give it a while till sometime load. All right, so we actually do set our gains first, Daniel. Going right across, we set our gains first. That is the most important thing on your board, setting your gain levels first. And then you can worry about whatever else happens in your, um, in your, in your channel, channel, channel flow. So, um, so you leave your monitors at the the center, and you okay, right? So, so about the monitor part, I'm gonna share your screen again. Um, so the monitor part. Um, so yes, based on my current setup. All of them are at unity gain. All of them are at unity. This is showing point one six less, but that's okay. It's so that it's just a little bit below any form of distortion that could possibly pass through. Which I, that doesn't happen, but just just so you know. Um, so yes, everything is at unity um, throughout pretty much everything going down the line. Everything is at unity. Wh what happens behind behind that or, or beyond this point is your compressor. So let me use go. Let me go on one that's using the compressor. The live stream currently is using the compressor as well as a limiter. So you may be wondering how do people get their things to be so loud, but yet still there's no distortion. They're actually using uh, a compressor, a kind of compressor and a limiter. Um, and I say a kind of compressor because this one here doesn't do the actual thing that the real mastering 
um, process uses. And this is just based on what the board is capable of doing. So what I've done here, I've actually brought up the gain to the standard level uh, of um, LUFS, right? Um, I can't remember what it means right now, but basically when you're using a software like Ableton, um, you can drop in an audio. Let me bring that up real quick. Ableton, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's in plugins, Waves plugins. And I look for, I think it's, what's it called again? Master. Yes. One of these master things. I uh, can't remember the name right now, but let me just show you exactly what is going on here. So over here, you turn the threshold down. That's right. So you set your ceiling, your output ceiling to be about negative 0.1. And then you bring your threshold down until it's reading on another meter. Let me bring that meter up. Um, meter. Uh, it's a lot, guys. This is actually, it's kind of difficult to show you all these things in just one sitting because there's so much that goes into making this a reality to produce what you hear these guys are producing. So here we have um, the short term and the long term of the LUFS, right? So if I'm playing um, something, um, oh, I didn't set it up. Let me plug this in real quick so you can hear it. All right, so that's in, and I'm going to, how do I make you hear this again? If that is going out into that, okay. I'm gonna join audio, and I'm going to use the microphone and output. Okay, I think you should be hearing now. No, this is going to cause a feedback. Oh, yeah, it's going to cause a feedback because uh, I'm not sure, sure. Yes, I have to think through that one. But if I was up top, it wasn't feedbacking. I don't remember what I did. Oh, oh I know. I why i know why guys i know why um i just want you to hear it i know exactly what's going on i need to turn i need to turn off let's wrote this here but the microphone needs to be something else like that i think it should work now let's see test testing mm. oh i think i need to do this Okay, yeah, I think I did know. Let's try it. Are you guys hearing it? No, you're not. Anyway, time. Now I'll go away some of that. Um, so where was I? I was showing you that when you're playing something on this, for example, you look on your master channel. Uh, let me go back to that channel that actually has the meters running. Uh, lead to the master. All right, here we are. So we have this running and we have that running. The LUFS is reading negative 13 right now, but on a standard level, it should be reading at about negative eight. If you were to play a hill song and put this into here, it will be reading around negative eight, negative six on the short term side. And even the long term side, maybe about negative nine or eight or something like that. But what I've done, I've just used this to gauge how loud my thing needs to be. So when I go on my, um, on my mixer, Back on my mixer, I know I just dial this up until it gets to around the same standard uh, volume level um, that everyone uses. That is actually out there. I mean, if you go on, you, on online and just search for master master LUFS level or whatever it may be, you're going to pretty much see it's around 11 going up to like 10, um, 9, 8 or so. Todd Delaney's albums are, are, are on like negative nine and therefore and those areas all right um guys if you have questions just ask so that i actually can you know explain things to you so daniel i hope i actually answered your question as to how we go about controlling what you hear in-house as well as online everything i i always have my inner monitors in if I were to pop up a Sunday service, any Sunday service, Gospel Refuge Tabernacle, you'll always see my, my in-ear monitors. I'm actually listening and I'm mixing from my laptop. So when that signal gets really low, I may bring them down a little bit. Yes, you have your compressor. Sometimes they're still a little tad bit low, but you don't want to touch your compressor because 
on an average on average someone is always like where you have set it so it's fine where it is so you maybe don't have that one person you might just want to bring it down a little bit to do your thing um and you continue what you're doing yeah. so yeah everything that's where yeah. that's where that's where that's where we are so andre back to basics a little for those yes. who are not so much in the deep end of all of this techie so we are saying there are two basic boards one is the analog which is the old time my way of saying old time and then you have the new board the digital board and the major difference sell us the reason why somebody should say to their pastor now get a digital board or if the person is just playing around what are the major uh pros of a digital board walk us through that technical awesome stuff all right so let me tell you one thing guys you see you see if you have a if you if you if you believe that something can really work and you put the work in in understanding how to accomplish it go after it that's my advice go after it you put the work in to know how this thing can work go after it in faith um and i'm going to tell you why because this is how we actually got the digital board so why a digital board simply put it is a lot cheaper than buying an analog board and all the things that you need to get the quality sound that you want so for example the Behringer that i have up top there right now was for like 550 us and you have analog boards like that are just like that for the same 550 us however it is lacking everything such as on on my shared screen here let me just rest this camera down um on the shared screen on the shared screen here it is lacking it is lacking your gate your compressor and your limiter your, your your analog board is lacking those things and that's really what makes the difference it does have effects some of them do have effects but sometimes you can't do certain things that you'd like to do like the parameters that you have available you you don't have that right. um on an yes you give us one sentence on each of those things gate limiter compressor one sentence on each of them gate is literally uh okay it it controls it, it's an auto mute button that's the that's the best way to put it. it is literally an auto mute button you won't see mute like this i'm going to mute myself you're not going to see mute like that or muting on these other channels you're not going to you're not going to see that happening what it simply does is i'm speaking right now and i've set my gate to be at a certain level looking at me now um this camera here to oh you have them spotlighted okay so this is where it's at right now and every time i speak my signal level goes pushes up and opens the gate opens the gate allows for audio to come in and once my i begin to speak softly or or i stop speaking it comes back down and closes the gate automatically muting in essence your channel uh what's the purpose of that it's to reduce the bleeding from other from your from this from the from your room whether it's on the drum set especially the drum set has gates galore has to run with gates because if you leave everything open um if you hit the snare it's going to bleed through the through the tom tom mics or the, the you know all the other microphones so that's what the gate really does it's pretty much auto mutes every single time signal goes up then it comes back down auto mutes that's that's pretty much gate it goes beyond that guys but that's where it's at. oh let me give you one quick example too whenever you hear those radio stations going on and people talking and they hear the music playing in the background um and every time they talk the music turns down automatically that is actually gating and it's actually called ducking um in 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 the whole gating world or you know where that that particular parameter is concerned um uh so yes that's what happens when they speak it auto automatically turns down and then it goes back up and you use that key source to do that something like key source or key listen everybody has a different kind of thing on their board compressor compressor simply takes care of how loud or how soft a signal is so when you have somebody yelling in the microphone your threshold along with your ratio and attack will take care of that so again with threshold here's my signal and anything that pushes beyond this signal gets compressed anything above it so this is where it's at right now and anything above it gets compressed 
and how much compression that, that happens there is based on your threshold threshold and your ratio uh it's gonna have gonna take a while to go into that but based on your threshold and your ratio you can fool around with them to kind of know what the parameters are you don't get this on an analog board and you need this in order for you to even get close to what you're hearing on those songs that you really like um some analog boards will have it but it's very basic it may just give you the threshold only you can't change the attack the release or the gain it just gives you the threshold and that's about it and you have to make it up back using your main gain up top um so that's that's pretty much it and then now for the low speaking when you're speaking very softly and you can hardly hear what the person is saying you use the gate to actually turn that up as loud as you like and you, what you want to do is balance out the highs or the peaks of that volume and the lows of that volume to be somewhere in the middle with still some dynamic range so it's not just it's not, it doesn't sound static and robotic just being one one level of loudness uh it's kind of you can hear when the person gets louder and when it gets softer you still want that realness to it or whatever that word you use right there but yes you still want to feel real and have that kind of experience the limiter is just simply like uh, it's just a ceiling when the signal hits it it cannot pass it no matter what you do you cannot pass it it literally cuts it off right there and that's what i was showing you on here on ableton that this the ceiling output ceiling up top i set that to 0 0.1 and it, nothing will pass that and i use the threshold now to bring up that gain the threshold is that the gain the loudness part of it to get it extremely loud for your listeners and you can play it in your phone and it's not it's not damaging your speakers you're not hearing any distortion all of that jazz that is how we ac actually accomplish it using um i mean accomplish or live stream audio being loud use you a similar process like this but like i said on my machine here it, we don't have all of those parameters so i've just tweaked it away where you know for the, the the limiter so i click on it here limiter is set at zero negative 0 0.3 negative 0.3 actually yeah i said the right thing negative 0 0.3 and our compressor is all the way up to again be at the standard output level of, uh, um where um for the lufs all right so you need your digital board to really be to really give you the highest quality that you'd love to get an analog board will simply not give you that and it makes no sense spending 550 us dollars on an analog board when you have a behringer digital board that can give you everything you need for the same price everybody should be going digital right now where where music is concerned audio is concerned everybody should be going everybody everybody i can't stress on that anymore if you want the song that you're looking for you need to be going digital from now on we have had us since 2013 and i'm glad that i did I, I i went with this because bigger engineers that i know said to me buy this analog board buy that and i was asking them what's up with the digital some of them were saying if you come jamaica with digital it's gonna mash up the guys are gonna mash up the drum are gonna play too hard and send strong signals to your board and blow the board it's it's since 2013 guys we still have the same board and 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 since we got this board and persons were able to hear what it can do and the fact that we're delivering they went out and got digital boards too because they realized it actually makes a lot more sense cost effective and and yeah. more and value you can for see your the money settings. that's one of the great things about it you don't have to be tweaking tweaking every time you can save settings yes and as you talk about settings on the other camera uh oh this is all got turned off um on the other camera uh this this camera keeps disconnecting oh that's the drum booth and here it's in my hand cool on this camera yeah we have something over here called scenes um sorry i have to be like looking and see what they're doing at the same time but yeah it's called scenes so if you're looking right now you're seeing that one saying um five lead mics grt five lead mics uh that's what we what, that's what we use so you just come on here every sunday and just hit recall and you're back in business if someone comes to use your church and want to do something different uh they can do anything they want to do and when you're done i just hit recall and i'm good to go again back to how things were before so that's 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 really where it's at having that digital board you can recall recall your scenes um what else is there wow 
So wow. we have a question from this year. Yes. <laughs> this year. All right. So this year is asking, is your keyboard connected to your laptop? That's part one of the questions. And how do you do that? Okay. Is my keyboard connected to my laptop? Okay. Tyrell, back to the phone. All right. Let's get that one in. You want me to stop the share, share screen? In? Sure, sure, sure. You can stop that one for now so that we can use the phone. Screen sharing is going to be stopped in just a little while. Good. Yes, on the phone. Yeah. Is is my laptop connected to my... Um, is my keyboard connected to my laptop? Okay. Simple answer. No, it's not. It's actually connected to the board. So we have our left and right signal coming out. The stereo, I run stereo here, guys. That's the best quality you can get. Stereo all the way, every day. All day, every day. So we have our stereo coming out which is the left and right, the blue cable is here, goes down, comes through, goes all the way over to our snake, and that's our snake here, uh, and then from the snake to the board. Now, the connection part actually happens as a result of having a digital board. But let me just show you one thing, because some of us may not be able to even connect certain ways, and such as myself, so I have to find another way of doing the same thing. So sometimes you just connect straight from your board to your laptop, but what I find happening is that you sometimes can't get the volume that you like to have. Um, the only reason I'm even doing this right now, this way, where I, I've actually, I'm actually have another Mackie here. This is a USB Mackie or like an audio interface. This one is, um, this one is, um, uh, is as a result of the fact that my board only works with Mac. This model of it, you have the newer ones that don't use Mac. I mean, they work both Windows and Mac. Um, so what we had to do to allow for it to read on a, on a Windows machine, I got this and brought these two signals in from auxiliary, I think it was five and six, auxiliary five and six, send it out. This is the live stream mix, by the way, that you're hearing, send it out into here. And then this converts the signal and connects it to this computer here that you're seeing right now. Uh, you actually hear me through this computer and not through through that one um computer slash the mixer everything is all connected so so yes uh what was i saying again um how i get it connected so you're hearing it actually because of this Mackie mixer everything is connected to the main board and then i send a signal out into this Mackie mixer which converts it from analog to digital using a usb connection xlr mixer then usb into zoom directly into zoom you can see that moving right now it's actually directly connected to zoom okay um yes that's how i do it um what software do you use to get the effects okay that's the third part of the question okay so the effects are all actually happening no i can actually just turn this off for a sec no it's okay i won't turn it off so that you can keep it running um let me spin this over i'm gonna go back to the shared screen uh, um shared screen all the effects are actually happening from the board here so effects over here we have stereo delay we have um, two stereo delays using and there are reasons for that and we have our hall and plate reverb so lead singers are always in plate set this back to three um so again an analog board can give you reverb but you can't get four different effects um buses to use you won't get that majority of the, the digital boards come with four uh, it would be great to get like eight but i think it's because of the process processing um power required to do that that's built in the board i don't know i don't know if they're gonna ever change or i think the, the more expensive ones actually can do it but anyway so so we have the effects running in so as i turn this up one two yeah. hello you can okay. actually hear the effects coming in um what about uh, your click tracks so you run your click tracks well my click tracks nice that's a very good question because not many persons ask about click tracks but click tracks are very important guys it makes a big difference um i want you to hear something i needed to hear something so how we run the click track though uh it's very very simple back to the back to the phone 
back to the phone so I can show show this section of the laptop. Yeah, we're there. Okay. You can yeah, okay. I'm not seeing, but that's all right. Uh, I think I can see. No. I think we have to stop the sharing for you to see. Yeah. No. Okay, I'm I'm seeing now. Great. So my click track really just runs from this this output from the laptop straight into the board. There's a connection at the back for the board. It's right down there, that gold plated connection. It's um it's actually the tape in. Tape in and tape in is running stereo. So I have two connections there. One is up by the keyboard where I'm playing, so I plug a similar cable in there. And one is here by the mixer, so that if you want to play a song from here while service is about to begin or whatever it is, we just have that flexibility by having two cables connected to the same um, input. And again, everything is stereo. Even right now, I've enabled stereo on, on Zoom. And you need to enable stereo on Zoom, right up here in the top right corner. It's, you know, it's enabled, which allows for everyone to hear what I hear. If you're yeah. not using, if you're not using a laptop, you will not hear it in stereo. You have to use a laptop to hear what I'm hearing in stereo. Yeah. Uh, do you do keyboard classes? Fourth part of the question. Uh, yes, but I haven't done it in a very long time, guys. <laughs> time. But, but yes time time and sometimes even dedication from persons you start awesome. and you know they end up falling off sooner or later uh, my, my teaching style really is i teach you something today you go home and you perfect that and then come back for another class or something else i'm not oh. going to come this saturday and then next saturday with it again and if, no you get it practice it come back next week or anytime you're ready if you want to if you want to come back next week that's great as long as you're ready to go for the next thing yes that's All that's right. kind of like how i do it yeah, Desia is on Desia. You have other questions? Were you satisfied? Um, uh, kind of. So the other question I have is that, all right, so for the software, is this a software that you use to do the, the clip, click track? Yes. Um, on the shared screen side, bring that back up now. So that's the name of the software, right? Click track? No, the software is actually called Ableton. Ableton. Yeah, Ableton. No, it doesn't matter though. You don't have to use Ableton. I just use Ableton because I've always used over the years and it's to me the best. And it's actually known as one of the best out there anyway. But you have Pro Tools, you have Logic, you have Reasons, you have Reaper, you have a whole bunch of them that can create click tracks. But to me, the most. That is the available most on. I'm sorry? That is available on my um, Play Store. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, no. You have to, you have to get it from their, from their website. You do have crack versions. I don't, I don't support cracks, guys. But um, you do have crack versions. Um, unfortunately, I actually, have one on my machine right now because it's expensive to buy it. But actually, you know, I'm telling you, even the guys who crack these softwares, they will tell you if you're gonna make money from it, buy the software. They, they allow you to use. They actually crack these things so that persons can get a, a chance to fully use the software to a, to an extent, right? But I have a copy here. I mean, if you want a copy, I could I could help you out with that. If anybody wants a copy, I could help them out with that. But Ableton is what does that. Um, I wish I could just give you a quick play of what this thing does in terms of a backing track. I have one here. Well, you on played the it machine. earlier, right? That was what you were no. using. To play the track. Well, yes, I was using the click track to play that look a song but there the backing track is in particular was what i wanted to have you guys hear um okay. uh yeah right. fair cloth has a question elon sure. after you play have you found it no 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 no. i'm looking for it go ahead okay. i'm just right. trying fair to make cloth. it work elon okay okay um good afternoon everyone so um andre i'm not sure if you remember me but I played for UCAM, I think in 2019. Yes, I'm the dude from Manchester with the MX-61. It's supposed to. <laughs> I have to see your face again. I have to see your face again to remember. Do you remember you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I always joke about how you, you have the other keyboards, but you always want to use mine. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, I have a question in regards to the mixer now. So um sadly i'm one of those persons that want to move to digital but i have to stick to analog for now but the analog mixer that i have it's 
a very powerful one. It's the Yamaha MGP32X. So okay. it allows, it gives me a lot of capabilities. Um, but one question that I have yes. in terms of well live streaming, I don't. The mixer doesn't have a um. What did I say? No, the USB port that you plug into the computer to share the audio. Yes. I have. Well, I have. I know that I have. Well, a lot of options. Well, sorry. One sec. Yes. So I have a lot of options in getting the audio out. Being well, the main axes or the matrix or even the group out. But out of the main and the ox, which one do you think would be better for live streaming? Okay. Um, I, uh, like, how can I put this? I use, I use the ox right now. And I wouldn't say there's necessarily a better one. I found that the main to be lower in volume. And you know, actually, let me tell you, I use the ox. You know why? Because... Um, the AUGS allows for you to send a separate, you can do different things without affecting the main. Yes, there are some things that are similar, but if, say, for example, on the shared screen here, I mean, shared screen here, let me go back on the, the machine. You should be able to see the mixer now. So we have the AUGS here that's happening and all this, all of my signals here are actually at Unity, except this one. I can't remember why. Oh, I know why. I know why. But they're pretty much at Unity. These are the top-back mics, so I have to keep those down so that they're not going back out for a person to hear what we're saying as musicians to each other. Um, so, auxiliary. Why? Because you can literally do everything that you're doing for the main with the auxiliary, while at the same time having two separate controls. That makes sense? You are able to do everything that you do with the main while at the same time having the upper hand to still do separate things. So, on my auxiliary channel here, like I mentioned before, I have cranked up the compressor, cranked it up here in order for it to be loud for the listeners. And I've set a limiter here. In the house, and over here is the main now. I'm going to select the main. Here we go. Notice on the main, no compressor ink. As a matter of fact, everything is, is disengaged. Everything is off. There's no limiter set, no EQ set, no that, no that. Only the graphic EQ that's actually set. And there's a little bit of graphics going on there. Um, so that allows me to, to do two separate things. And what needs to be loud is my listeners. If I were to turn off the compressor right now, listen how low I'm going to get for you guys. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. You heard that difference? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. That's the that's the vast difference that I have. And in the house, the volume never changed. I was still just as low as I'm now. And there did nothing change with that. And again, the effects, they're all happening as well. You can fool around with the effects and have slightly different things where the effects are concerned um, regarding, you know, your AUGs versus your main mix. Okay. I'm here, as you're talking, I'm here experimenting with my mix-up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting louder. Am I getting louder? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Talk some more. <laughs> I always want to be loud, Andre. Am I loud? Yeah. Um, possibly. I, I would have. We'd have to go. We'd have to do a session after. That. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, you owe me a free session. No problem. <laughs> Any more questions, guys? I think there's stuff going on in the chat. Um, so, Andre, how long it took, it took you to learn all of this? Because I'm here and I, my is hurting me. <laughs> <laughs> How long it took me? Oh my. Uh, it took me uh, probably about 10 years to, to, to be where I'm at. And I'm still learning. I don't stop watching YouTube videos. And even if, it's, if I know about gain structure, which is setting the gains at the top of the mixer board, I still go back and watch another one. Like just the other day, I actually changed my style of using that gain structure because I noticed something that I wasn't getting and I wanted to get it, and I realized it was actually because of the gain structure. Not that I was doing anything wrong, but there's another way of doing it to get a particular sound that you, you'd like to, to hear, especially what I'm hearing these guys doing. They do something different from the standard information that they send out there about gain structure. And that's so, that's so weird that 
sometimes y y they, they will teach us the basics let's say set the game properly and set it at 18 negative 18 dbs or zero unity if you're on an analog board is zero um for the signal bars and and it's negative 18 for um, pr um digital boards but the truth is you, you you don't get as much control as you really want because why if you if you're on this camera over here this camera again to relay the mixer camera uh you can stop the share screen let me stop the share screen okay yeah so back on this one guys um what i found that so you, you may see that these channels are actually down here that's because there's something going on with the mixer and these these the, the drum faders especially and this one over here that is actually down the others are all working perfectly fine but what even though it's down here on the digital side within what you can't see it's actually up the drum signals are actually set properly where they are if um uh, I, was gonna, I was trying to find i was trying to make a seat from up here but it's not showing right now but anyway um these are actually somewhere uh that is correct um so what I found, guys, is that even though you're, you're, you're to set you're to set your levels, I'm talking here, your level should be at around negative 18, well, at around the lowest volume or a little bit above that, and the talking may fall around, you know, wherever the talking falls. Usually it's the lowest volume that you want to be capturing, your peak. I found that even after setting everything, all your signals up top, guys, to the right place, and having negative 18 reflecting reflected over here for every single channel i found that i'm losing resolution on my faders resolution so what is resolution it's pretty much uh, those small incremental um, um increases or decreases that you can make on your channel your fader strip so notice I'm gonna see if I can get an angle, trying to see it. So notice at the U, right, where this fader is right now, below the U, you have a five, above the U, you have a five, and then you have 10. Below the five, you have 10, then you have 20, then you have uh, 30, then 40, 50. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me go over to this side, right? 40, 50, 60. So what's happening is that if you barely, if you barely move, if you barely move, I'm jumping a whole lot in this region right now. And I can show you this on the digital side. You really see the numbers jumping up and down. But if I'm up further here, then if I if I move this from five and go one stroke up, that's four dBs. Then three, two, one, and then unity. I have a lot more resolution here. And I can make those minor sweet changes to make the audio come out really good. Um, uh, so what happened is that if you have your thing set at negative 18 and you find that you're pulling a signal way down here in order for it to be at the sweet spot you know something seems to be wrong because you want to have that kind of control up here which you only get it between five and zero and ten uh, you want a kind of control here so what did I do differently I took a lead mic probably the one I have in my hand right now <laughs> it's all up in my face um, the one I have right now, and um, I I set I set the um, the level over here. Well, actually, I set it from the main. I don't know why I'm not going to the main, but it should be moving the main up here. Oh, I think I know why. Hold on, one, two, yes. So I set it based on the main, and I said, all right, my lowest volume. I can't. I don't know if it's focusing properly. Oh, this is a manual focus, guys. Sorry, it's a manual focus. I have to change it. But anyway right up here is actually negative 10 then negative 20 then 40 so what is it this is the main this is what's coming out directly to the house and that what everyone is hearing so i said to myself you know what what if i set everything based on the main signals and what i did guys i set this to negative 10 so i put my channel here number 24 to unity and i turned again down or wherever i need to turn it for it to be at negative 10. You don't have to be negative 10 for you, but I just found that, that that to be the better place. I think what I used actually was to set it at unity, leave this gain at unity, and then set this at unity, and where set the main, you're also your main bus at unity, and where whatever I'm left with, 
what if I'm left with, I'm hearing myself alone in the house, sorry. What if I'm left with, um, I work with that. So I was singing very loudly. I can't sing, but I was just, you know, doing something. Um, very loudly. And it was hitting at negative 10, negative 9. On the digital side, it's like negative 9 or so. And I was like, all right, I'm going to use it as a benchmark. And I went through and I changed all of these back. And I set everybody to Unity, every single channel back to Unity, and did that. What that did for me now was to allow me to have very small increments where the, with the faders because now it was setting based on what's going on to the host and not really what your channel is doing, but what the host is actually receiving. And it made a big difference even in how the sound is right now. I think it's probably one of the best to me yet. Right? Um, you could, if you go on Gospel Refuge Tabernacle.com, not .com, Gospel Refuge, if you go on Gospel Refuge Tabernacle YouTube, you will, um, you will, you will hear a couple of the services and kind of get an idea of the sound that we're talking about. Um, yeah. All right. That's a whole lot of chatting again. More questions, guys? No more questions, guys. Yes, folks, don't be shy with your questions. Okay, so um, basically, I'm hearing Come me. Yes, I'm hearing you. So yeah, you earlier you said that um, you can give us a copy of the software, I believe, that you use. Yes. Okay. I said in my email. <laughs> uh, um, after the show, I asked Mr. Um, Terrell to um, no problem. Yeah. No so problem. No, you can inbox him right now because we'll be on for a while, so you can inbox him <laughs> at the post show, and um, he can he can deal with. About that. Um, <laughs> Zoom. Okay, so, thanks. Zoom. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I think I can make you guys hear the click track about now. Let's see. Um, open this. No. Loop back. I'm, I'm trying to make you guys actually hear the click track again. That is on. Oh, I need to I need to bring Ableton into this. Ableton. Um, Ableton, Ableton, Ableton. I think you guys are hearing now. You guys hearing? Terrell? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Awesome. So, that's the click track that's playing. Um, yeah, so actually, let me go work on share screen now. So, Ableton. It's going to be a lot to kind of go in depth. But again, if you're not using a... If you're not using a... Um, what's that thing called again? A laptop? You're not going to hear this in stereo. This is actually playing in stereo. Uh, so, we have Ableton running. Allows us to do the, you know... All of that stuff we can create each of those clicking sounds that you're hearing um and whatever else so here's um here's another one we're going to be doing he's able and you deserve it and a couple of other ones and i'm going to use i'm going to use this one for uh let me turn let me just delete some stuff i can't save this file guys i have to make sure i don't save this file so i'm going to be using this for um you deserve it and uh, what's the other one again? You deserve it. And there's another one. So for example, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, da, 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 da. my hallelujah. I don't know if it's in time. Is it in time? It should be in time. You. You're right. Um, and so you deserve it. And I can actually throw in some other sounds, such as uh, I don't even know why I'm not hearing it. Let me switch over to another one. Let me go on this one. It's a little bit faster. Oh. Oh, let me go back to this one. Do I need to go back to this one? Yeah. Yes, additional sounds. That you can add to it. Well, you have to create the atmosphere basically. Huh? 
We use that sound to create the atmosphere. Yes, it sense. actually yes, in a sense, it does make a big difference when you add those other other sounds. I have a guitar playing right here as well. I think it's gonna load in my side now. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, they're in two different keys, guys. I was tampering with this yesterday for our praise and worship session that we had, practice session that we had. Um, it's in the key. Da, 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 da. What key was this again? I think it was in E. Musicians can tell me what key this is. Da, let's see. Let me change this. I think it's in E. No, it's not E. It's E. Which one? Which one? It's, it's E. Oh, well, I, I don't know why this thing is telling me the wrong thing then. Oh, I think I need to go to 5. A. So, right here, what, what I'm doing right here, guys, is actually finding where, where I set this, the time I did it. I don't remember where I set it at that time. So, um... Um, Can you play it again, Andre? Yeah, sure. Let me turn off this other one then. Let me, this is also in the wrong key. Uh, oh, you said E? Let me repeat this one. A. Try A. A? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let me hear this. Yeah. It's in E. But well, let me drop this to A. Oh, sorry. Yes, it's all right. What? Mm, I don't remember where I said this thing. I, if I was on the instrument, I would remember it better. Oh, oh. No. I don't remember, guys. I don't know why I'm forgetting right now. Uh, I know why. I know why. I know why. I know why. This particular instrument on Ableton, there's on, that's something you can you guys can know for Ableton. Some instruments actually change the key, so you may be playing in E or or whatever, but that sound that you you selected is not in the same key. Can that be changed? Yes, but I'd have to go to another step to do that, and I didn't bother to it. I just wanted to make it, and we move down and move on, move on with it. So now it's in the right key. I have to play this one in F sharp, but the original key is actually E because I remember what song we were doing this for. But here, here we are. Give me one sec, guys. Okay, sorry, guys. Actually, I have somewhere to go. But yeah, I just need to let the person know because I'm going to meet them soon. So here we are. So that is equal to much. So, for example. So, um, let me use another one. I have two guitars running here. Okay, can you use this one? You're supposed to be hearing it on your left side. If you're not hearing on your left side, you're supposed to be hearing it on your left side, guys. Yeah, I have to go fix this. This echo part. Let me see if this is it. No, this is it. Yeah, that's kind of better. Let me try this one. No, let's work with six for now. I didn't get to change this. But we can work with that for now. So, so good to say. My hallelujah belongs to you. Then the effects belongs to you. Watch this now. Bring up the effects, guys. Hey, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Can okay, bring in the um, echo coming in? Hey, my hallelujah belongs to you. Sorry, it's kind of lagging on my end. Yeah. You deserve it. You deserve it. I can't sing, guys. I can't sing. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah, 
and he can bring the guitar. Hold on and it belongs to you. And a whole bunch of other things. Let me turn off the echo. Right. Bring back down the reverb. Yeah, guys. So that's a uh, quick. It may not be the best, probably hearing over what you're doing now, but. Um, and again, it's kind of lagging on this at my end because of the, it's all, all that's going on to power this thing. Um, but if you're on a laptop, you should hear something close to it, guys. You should hear something close to it. Um, any other questions? Uh, yes, sir. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> Folks, Good. we have gone deep. Deeper than I thought. Deeper than I brought my swim trunks for. Um... But I, I have a question. There. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, <Dwight. laughs> Um, bro. Um, the the tracks them. Um, you build them yourself, and the the software you show me. Yes, I did everyone myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, C Dub C Dub C Dub actually has a software an app where he builds click tracks. But you really just get the you just get the click, and I, I look at a bit of instruments here and there. But yeah, I have it. I have it. But um, like the for the, the my hallelujah that 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 track there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I have to pay for it or something like that. Yeah, which is why I got this way because I don't have to pay for it and I can already play. So I just build them. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, well, you, need, you need to give me some class, bro. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Or sell it, sell it, make money. <laughs> Or I could sell. That's so true. I could actually sell. I I never actually think about that side too much. Well, yes, that makes sense. Why you is use, your first investor? So I'm being asked if I use only Ableton stock, Ableton stock, Ableton plugins for this. Yes, I think the only thing I didn't use for from Ableton, I used um Waves plugin, that was to amplify the sound to be at the mastering level, the actual mastering level. I did that using Waves plugin. Yes, you can use Ableton plugins for it too. But Waves is like the best thing to actually have. Um, all of what's going on here with the digital board, actually, guys, because I have a digital board, I can route everything from my board into Ableton and then let you hear what Ableton is doing based on those signals coming in from the board. So I can send in the raw signals. Nothing happens on the board, just the raw signals, guys, just the inputs. Then Ableton, using Waves plugins or Ableton stock plugins and do all the tweaks, this is even better to me than using the board. I would actually use Ableton um, if, if, if I had a, a machine, which would just buy that machine, like I mentioned. And I'm, I've already started considering to go that direction because when you go, you watch YouTube, I got some big churches, a lot of times they're using Waves plugins. They actually have the Waves unit put aside somewhere and they just have digital board on the surface to just control the faders and a few more things and they have the touchscreen monitors. But it's really the Waves plugins that is doing the whole work and you're hearing a clean audio sound. Yeah, but you need a digital board, guys, to get going on that. All right, folks, thank you, Andre Hamilton, the guru of digital things. If you want to support us, I mean, we didn't charge you for these in-depth sessions, multi-billion dollar sessions. If you wish to support us, keep heart to heart and the unstoppable brand and keep us training because we have other things we need to train folks about so andre is committed to training but you know it, it costs to um rent the zoom platform and the software and the time you know so if you wish to help keep us on the air you can donate um amazon gift cards or paypal donations to really morgan at gmail you can whatsapp me 374-8653 if you want us to come to your actual church to do the training, I think that, you know, might cost a little, you know, a little fee or so for the time to bring everybody physically in. You can also send us uh, any donation to Ralph Morgan, Bank of Nova Scotia, University of the West Indies Mona, account 2794. I think you have to add zero to make it up to the nine. And it's a savings account, so you can just screenshot it if you wish. We appreciate your donations if you can if you have been blessed and you want this to continue and you want us to go from church to church and to you know bring us to the next level in sound all things sound 